Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today I am going to go over how to import a Maya file that has alpha maps or transparencies into the Unreal Engine. This is something that has been requested several times, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. So in the previous tutorial, we went over how to create these vines. We're using uh, two alpha maps. One is going to be flowers and one is going to be leaves. So if you would like to follow along, that is on a previous tutorial at academicphoenixplus.com. If you want to follow along, you can download the files at academicphoenixplus.com. Okay, now let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is export this object as an FBX. So to do so, we'll do the first one, which is a wall. We'll go to File, Export. Now I do have something called Send to Unreal, but I'm going to show you the long way just in case you guys don't have that. So we're going to go to File, Export Selection, go to the Options, and you want to make sure that FBX is active. If it's not active, you need to go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plug-in Manager. So that's Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plug-in Manager. And you'll just look for the FBX. There it is, Game FBX Exporter. Just turn those two on. And also this one, FBX Maya, turn those two on and you should be good to go. All right, we're going to export selection. I personally like to put it in my Maya scene file. So this is vines, scenes. So you can see I already exported an FBX because I was making sure everything worked out. I'll just go ahead and replace it. And then comes our vine. Now you might be tempted to just selecting everything and exporting, but you really need to make it into one piece of geometry. So I'm going to select everything and deselect the ones that I don't need. And I am going to go to mesh combine. This is going to make it look like it's one piece of geometry, which is fine for this exercise. All right. So I personally like to delete all history and freeze the transformations. So everything's good to go. I also like to make sure that the pivot points at the bottom, otherwise it may be a little bit challenging. And by the way, Unreal uses very different coordinate systems than we do. So I am going to have to scale this pretty large because uh, their, their uh, system compared to ours is different and compared to Maya's is very different. So let me show you under display grid options. You usually want to do 10, 1,110. So it goes by the units of 10. When I apply, this is actually the world scale of Unreal. So I would, if you want to make sure that everything fits Unreal, you need to make sure that your grid line and scale is correct. So I'm going to freeze this again. Again, don't forget to put your pivot out there. Go to File, Export Selection. This is going to be my vines. And there we go. Let's go to Unreal. Uh, currently, I am using Unreal Engine number 4.18. So if you want to follow along, you're more than welcome to. I am creating a new project and this is under uh, Vines and I also have a folder called Epic. So this is important and it's up to you which one you want to do. You can, uh, some people like to start off with the third person. Others like to start off blank. I personally like to start off with third person because I like to see this little guy running around and then I could see the environment. So I'm going to create my project. Unreal is a big, big engine just like Maya. So it's going to take a little bit of time for it to load, so just give it a second. Okay, Unreal. So if you've never been to Unreal before, this is how it starts off. And if you press play, you can move it around just like a regular, and then you can walk around and jump and stuff like that. Press escape to get out of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and import our first item. There are several ways you can import things. Um, I have a tendency to just drag and drop. So over here on the right, we have geometry and inside here has mesh and mesh is what this is, uh, what's in this space. Then we have a mannequin and a couple of other things. So I want to make sure that under my geometry, I put my vines in here. The other thing I also want to make sure is that I have something for materials. There's no materials in here. So I'm actually, I'm going to create a folder and this is going to be called materials. And just to keep things organized, we're going to call this textures. Okay, in mesh, I'm going to go to my scenes and I'm going to grab the wall and the vines and I'm going to just click and drag and just kind of hover over here until you see how it now says a little plus sign. That means that it's ready to import and drag and drop. It's going to ask me if you want to import all this. I say import all and there we go. 
So right, it's gonna give me some errors, so that's okay. The first thing you'll see is that we have a pair of vines here. We also have our wall, but it can, it actually imports all of our shaders. Now the issue is that the AI standard sh surface shader and the material that um, Unreal provides don't match. So we have to kind of, so it puts on the default shader because it doesn't know what else to do. But what we're gonna do is uh, update it. So let's go ahead and drag our vine into our scene. Right? So remember how small my object is and then I increase the scale if I want to go back to Maya. Looks pretty big, right? Well, on real, it's not so big. It's actually really small. So I'm probably still going to have to scale. Now I'm big, uh, in Unreal you really want to try to keep it into like the uh, values of, you know, one. So just going to keep that in mind. It's just it's happier that way. Uh, let's see, other things you'll notice is that the shader is missing and when I turn over my leaf, the alphas disappear, right? So we have a couple of things we need to troubleshoot. I'm going to rotate this just because, and I'm going to increase my scale to three. Okay, so we can see it a little better. Focus, okay. So over here to the right, we have our vine. Over here, we have three elements. One is called leaf AI standard, one's flower, and one is the one that I didn't name, which is the stem. So let's start with the stem because it's basically a solid color. Double click on the shader, and you're gonna see that we have a node. Double click on the color, and you can change the color. So this is heat, this is um, duration, and this is the value. So I wanna make sure that I can get a nice dark value and make sure that's a little bit forest-like and click OK and match it as much as I can to my scene. Once you're done, click Save. What happens is that now the area that has was the vine already has the shading, which is great. OK, let's talk about the leaf. So same story. Notice that it cannot read the file. And if I try to go grab my, my leaf texture, which was a TIFF, which I think it was TIFF leaf two, and I try to bring it in. It um, it has a hard time reading TIFFs. It actually can't see. Failed to import. Doesn't Unreal for whatever reason can't read TIFFs, but it can read targas and PNGs. So what I did already was convert the leaf color into a targa. So you just go to Photoshop, file save as, and change it into a targa. And a targa does have transparency. It does have an alpha map attached to it. So it's the same thing as a TIFF, except that it is now a targa. We're going to go ahead and click and drag and just drag it into your scene here. And there it is. And how you bring it into here is you click and drag it here. Oop, there it goes. Delete this. And this is our texture sample. What we want to do is grab this one, which is the color, not the R, the B, G, or the B, it, and it's connected to the base color. And then we can click apply to see what that looks like. Give it a second, and there is the color, but we're having some transparency issues. And the reason why is because very similar to the AI standard at, at Maya is that you have to act, tell it that it has transparencies. We're gonna go over here to the left, select your, uh, I know it's called AI standard, we gotta change that, but uh, we're changing this and we're gonna, or select that, and instead of opaque, we're changing it to translucent. Now you can see that opacity is active. So we can click apply and see what happens. All right, so not much because we haven't connected an alpha to it. The alpha is connected here. We're going to drag it to opacity. Click apply. Oh, see, now you can already tell that's working. And there you go. Click save. All right, that may have been a little fast, but we're going to do it again with the flower. Let's double click on the shader here. Let's move this aside. And same story, we're going to bring in the flower. So I'm going to bring my sources. I've got my flower CLR, which is a targa. Bring that in. Thinking. Thinking hard. I'm going to try that again. Sometimes you got to try twice. Just move it around, wiggle it, and drop it. Give it a second. Look around and see if there's some sort of weird error. Let me see. Okay. 
and you also have to click save all everywhere okay so make sure you save all okay let's try that again if it doesn't work we're just import it ourselves uh, the slow way I'm gonna copy this just in case all right flower grab it here drag it let it go there it goes I don't know what happened but it's working now okay and I think did I do the wall let's see wall 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 textures.com wood old wall bring that in just because I know I'm gonna need that okay great all right so double click on this we're gonna drag our flower into here we're gonna grab the color and place it so notice that opacity is grayed out that means that we have to select the shader and change the opaque to translucent grab the alpha connect it to the opacity you can click apply I'm gonna click save because I know it worked Ta-da! pretty neat it works okay so that is how you transfer things in let's figure out what to do about this this is the issue is that right here we're having double sided that means that we need to tell unreal that this should have a double side so let's click on our texture or on our shader let's scroll down until we see two-sided click on two-sided we're going to do the same thing for the flowers we're going to scroll down until we see two-sided and then save actually let me save on both sides so that's saving that's saving slowly and now when we go around it you can see that everything is working just dandy all right i'm gonna just to show you how cool this is just move this here move this along here rotate a little bit maybe scale it a little bit same thing for this one let's scale it Ooh, let's bring in the wall forgot about the wall let's bring in the wall you're gonna see that it's tiny right because I didn't scale it according to the unreal scale so that was my bad so even though I scaled it 10 by 10 by 10 it's still really small right so now I gotta go even higher I did something oh, there it is 20 by 20 by 20 okay so that's our wall we have the same issue it's very thin so that means that the wall needs to be double-sided when we go to the shader so here's our shader move this out of the way I'm not sure why it does that but you can select the shader scroll down two-sided and let's bring in our wall texture this one doesn't have any um, alphas so we don't have to connect anything okay there it is probably needs to be bigger maybe 30 40 Whoa. okay so I'm gonna scoot this over here I'm gonna grab these guys and scoot them over as well okay, rotate them and place them in the scene All right, let's press play. And there they are. Transparent, the wall, and everything. If I got rid of the wall, let's say I can maybe move it. Press play, you'll be able to go around the vines. And it still works. Though, of course, if I was doing this, I'd make sure I have flowers facing this direction too. But uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. It's uh, Unreal is really neat. I've done Unreal for VR and stuff like that. So thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope that was helpful. Um, now you know how to import objects into Unreal and it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for listening again. Again, you can download this and follow along. I'd love to, uh, for you to subscribe to my channel and also to subscribe to my newsletter so that you can get uh, pre-release content, free models, and workshops and stuff like that at academicphoenixplus.com. All right, everybody, thank you so much, and I will see you next time.